Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fantasy Football Pater Podcast. This is Gerald Glassford, and I'll tell you what, I am so excited to go ahead and be a part of this awesome show. Season one was just truly outstanding, but you're here to listen to our guru when it comes to the man, the myth, the legend behind Fantasy Football Pater Podcast. He's psyched. He's ready to go. It is my good friend. It is Tyler Baker. What's going on, man? Welcome to again to be a part of the Pop Culture Cosmos channel in its entirety, my friend. Just so great to have you right here on the channel. I'm super excited. I'm ready for another season of football. I'm ready to sit down and hang out with you and talk football. Man, it's exciting. It is indeed, but hold on a second. Before we get into uh, the festivities as far as our show is concerned and what you want to talk about and get into when it comes to fantasy football, I got to tell everyone out there, we recently joined up in a league, and I'm just going to make sure for everybody out there that I've got the full theatrics on for this one. So uh, bear with me now. And here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> in the old English style. Hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> it is by proclamation from the pop coach of cosmos that the fantasy football league is now upon us. And seeing how we are now in the year of the football, Combatants on the field of virtual, as we are. I shall proclaim that it is now time for the festivities to commence. Let the smacketh talk begin. <laughs> it is that time of year. And I noticed that in the league that we play together, we meet each other week one. And I probably lose to you week one, but that's okay. That's okay. Oh, well, I couldn't lose to a better guy, but we'll have to wait and see. The smack talk we'll might change around. Yes. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see because the ESPN projections have us evenly at 119.4 apiece. So the ESPN projections are saying that this is going to be a close, close matchup. I'm excited. But ESPN. you are going to lose. Yeah, but oh, it's yeah. going to be exciting. Well, yes. <laughs> ESPN has told me a lot of things before in the past, uh, and it's I, been not always been right on that one. I know. They lie. But we've got, they do. But it's going to be a great show we have for you today. I know we're going to focus on a lot of things, and you're going to touch on a lot of things going on in football because there's a lot of changing parameters as we get closer to the season starting. Mm -hmm. And there's still yeah. leagues that are forming. There are still people that are out there trying to go ahead and connect to get a Yahoo League going, an ESPN League going, and all that good stuff. So first advice from you as far as what are you looking for or what should you look for when you're going ahead and joining a last minute league? Well, it's always best to play with people that you know and people that you like because fantasy football is all about having fun. I'm in a league with my family. Now that I live in South Carolina, I live around quite a bit of family and we're doing a family league and it's fun to play with people that you like, people that you love, your family. Also. Check and see if there's a league at your workplace. That's always fun when you stand around the water cooler on Monday and, and talk a little smack. You can join a league online, you know, with ESPN and, and play with some people that you really don't know. That's okay, but it's really about the smack talk. That's what it's about. It's about hanging out with your with your friends, your family, and and doing things together and playing fantasy football is very special when you are playing with people that you enjoy outside of fantasy football. So if you're kicked out into the front lawn by another rival sibling or anything of that nature, oh, yeah. that, that's okay. Uh -huh. that, that's okay. And you don't get to live it down <laughs> <laughs> until next season. <laughs> I, I can imagine. I can imagine that's the case, but that's some great advice right there. I know we've got a lot of things to talk about when it comes to fantasy football. Like I said, it is getting down to the nitty gritty. The final cuts are around the corner. Mm -hmm. What is on your mind when it comes to fantasy football and what do people need to target when they're going out and just, you know, either shaping up for their team or going ahead and, and shooting for as far as for a draft in an upcoming league? Well, this part of the season is all about the draft. Now, one of the, one of my biggest rules going into the draft that I tell people is just to relax. You need to understand that you're not going to win or lose your league according to how you draft. You're going to win or lose your league according to how you manage your team throughout the season. The draft is a very big, very important part of putting your team together. So you're going to want to prepare. There's no substitution for preparation. 
the most important things that you need to prepare for is you need to understand the scoring settings in your league. You need to understand how your league scores. Is it a PPR league? How do the quarterbacks score? For every touchdown, are you scored four or six points? What's the pointage on the yardage? There's all, the th all of those things that you'll need to know and understand before you start drafting. If you don't understand the scoring in your league, you're not going to draft well. You also need to make sure you understand your roster positions. Are, is, is it a two wide receiver league? Is it three? Are there flex spots? Who can you play in the flex spots? All of those things are very important. Once you understand how your league scores, then you can begin to understand how you value players. And then beyond that, there are some do's and don'ts I have going into your draft. You want to relax. You want to know your scoring system. You want to find a good cheat sheet or a set of rankings. So go to ESPN, go to Yahoo, make sure that you download the cheat sheet that corresponds best with the type of league that you're in. Namely, is it a PPR league or not? I will and say this. I just found CBS Sports to be very helpful as well. Okay. They had uh, the opinions of three of their experts, and it's all categorized, their picks, mm -hmm. uh, top picks pretty much across the board. I found that extremely helpful as well. Sure. And there are a lot of them out there. There's no shortage of rankings. I like Christopher Harris's rankings. I don't go line and step with him, but I do appreciate his perspective on things. Footballguys.com. They have a great little app. It's called the Draft Dominator. And what you can do with that app is you can program your league's specific scoring settings into the app, and they will formulate a cheat sheet for you. So there are a lot of tools out there. And that's part of the preparation for your draft, finding a list that you like. And you don't have to 100% agree with the list, but at least it'll be there so that in the later rounds of your draft, you'll have some kind of a guide. Because honestly, it's the later rounds, the mid to late Later rounds is really where you're going to build a good team. The draft picks in the first three, five, six rounds are kind of set. <laughs> you know, there's not a whole lot of, of deviation from how most of the major outlets rank players, but it's when you get down into those middle and late rounds, that's where you're really going to put a good team together. Absolutely. That's where you're going to build the actual strength and depth mm -hmm. of your team because Absolutely. You know, football are going to get a lot of injuries. You could rest assured on mm -hmm. that. And it definitely is going to be something that you got to look out for. Yeah, it's great to have that kind of depth early on that you get in the draft, but also be wary of the waiver wire and, and who you need to pick up and who's hot and who's not as far as who you need to drop on your team and who you need to pick up instead. And that's where you need to listen to the Monday episode of the Pop Culture Cosmos because we're going to be going over all that stuff because most waiver wires happen on Tuesday. So we're going to be watching the games. Gerald, you and I will be giving the listeners some advice on who they need to look for on the waiver wire. Absolutely. And again, we will be having separate episodes as well created out of our conversations. So if you get a chance to either check out our Pop Culture Cosmos or PCC Multiverse shows, no problem. If you can't, for some reason, it's also going to be on our Pop Culture Cosmos channel. And it will be also full episodes of the Fantasy Football Pater podcast as well. So speaking of fantasy football, my friend, mm -hmm. I know a lot of things are going on in the league right now that are of interest to you. So share with me your thoughts. I know Teddy Bridgewater going to the Saints was something that was very newsworthy in case Drew Brees gets hurt. At least mm -hmm. New Orleans is going to have a capable backup for now, first time in a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems like that the teams that have had backup quarterback issues, they're looking at that more seriously just in case there's an injury that might come about. Well, and I think in the case of Teddy Bridgewater, I think – <laughs> at least now it looks like he might be the future of the Saints. I mean, Drew Brees has already said if they win a Super Bowl, he's not coming back. So <laughs> Drew Brees is already looking at his life beyond football. And this could be a move to solidify Teddy Bridgewater as their future uh, quarterback. And, and it's good for Teddy Bridgewater. It will give him some time to really work out the kinks in his knee because he had a really gruesome injury. And sitting behind a guy like Drew Brees and learning how Sean Payton runs that offense, this looks like a future move more than just a backup move. So that's really interesting. All of the things that are happening right now in football, as far as the fantasy relevance, there's not a whole lot. And that even goes into the preseason games themselves, I, I rarely watch preseason games. I don't look at the stat lines from preseason games because these teams are not 
going digging into their playbook. They're not running their offenses or even their defenses the way that they're going to during the regular season. The preseason is more a time of just getting guys into football shape, getting them used to being on a football field. The things that I pay attention to in preseason, at least from a fantasy standpoint, is did somebody get hurt? And I don't mean they're not playing because they have a physical issue. If you have a player and he's got a little bit of a knee issue, a little bit of swelling, you're not going to, you're not going to put him on a football field. Now, if it was the regular season, you probably would because you need to win games. But as far as preseason, you know, to hear that guys aren't playing, that doesn't bother me. It's when guys are playing and they get hurt. Who was it that uh, somebody tore their ACL? Marquise Lee of Jackson. Yeah. That, yeah. That's going to be a critical thing because he was their number one receiver. Now, mind you, they're not a, prolific passing offense but still in a passing league it does put a dent as far as if anybody had him as maybe a number two or number three wide receiver and and a lot of people did because of the jacksonville receivers he was probably the one that was getting drafted so if you're looking for a replacement for him it's probably keenan cole there's still dd westbrook that's there dante moncrief who's a very interesting guy that played in indianapolis for so many years and did really well in indianapolis but like you said, that's not, that's not, I don't want many shares of that passing offense. As far as Jacksonville, you would like to have their defense, and you definitely want Leonard Fournette. I think Leonard Fournette's going to have a monster year this year, barring injury. You and I both agree upon that. I think he could be ending up as the NFL's leading rusher ahead of guys like Gurley. Maybe Le'Veon Bell, I might bank a little bit more because I know he's got a lot to prove, especially in a contract year. So other than that, I think Leonard Fournette could be close behind, if not exceed, depending on what's going on around the league. But we'll actually also, you got Ben Roethlisberger as his quarterback. So in all those, and Antonio Brown, so that could take away. Sure. Yeah, sure. Well, my concern with Leonard Fournette is, is he going to stay healthy? He bitten last year. He didn't through college. (laughs) So if they can keep him healthy, yeah, I, 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 I think he has a good shot at claiming the rushing title. But I just don't know how many weeks he's going to be on the field at 100%. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. Mm, Nothing's better when grilling your favorite meal than adding some delicious Wheelie Q rubs, seasonings, and gluten-free barbecue sauce. Made with the finest ingredients, Wheelie Q products pack a ton of flavor to your meals, whether it's ribs, chicken, steak, hamburgers, fries, or vegetables. To get your hands on some of these tasty Wheelie Q items, head on over to www.wheelieq.com and a portion of all profits made will go into finding a cure for spinal muscular atrophy. Pop Culture Cosmos listeners, act now and get 15% off your order just by entering the promo code POD1, that's P-O-D and the number one at checkout. For the tastiest food on the grill, nothing's better than Wheelie Q items today at wheelieq.com. What are some of the other things that you're targeting right now, now that you've got your league set up and you're ready to target in on certain individuals like myself for week one and ready to blow me out of the water? (laughs) You know, you never know. You never know. Hey. hey. (laughs) But... When you're setting up your team, mm-hmm. what are some of the things that you're going to look for as far as, you know, just, okay, I picked these guys, I picked the top eight guys, mm-hmm. eight slots, they're done, they're great, it's all, all good now, I'm, I'm all set. What are you actually looking to do maybe to tweak your roster a little bit heading into the season? Because it's never just a draft and then they're set, because it never mm-hmm. seems to work out that way for any owner that I know. Be watchful because what I've noticed in recent years playing fantasy football is that after the draft, almost immediately guys are trying to trade, which blows my mind. If you wanted a guy, you should have gotten him in the draft. But if you really had your eyes on a guy and he slipped through your fingers and you really want him, you're going to try to make a trade for him. So be on the lookout for trade partners before the season starts. And if you can pull out a good trade, go ahead and do it. As far as setting your week one roster, Play the starters that you drafted. Don't try to get too cute with it. It's week one. We really don't know what these teams are going to look like yet. Hey, is Saquon Barkley, is he going to be a stud or is he going to be a dud? We don't know. He's a rookie and he's playing behind a terrible offensive line. We don't know. And if there's any team that is set up to pass the ball, it's that one. 
but you drafted him in the first or second round. So guess what? You're going to play him. So my advice is if you drafted a guy high, if you drafted him to start week one, you're kind of committed into starting him. That's just my philosophy. Once the first, I would say about two, three weeks of the season play themselves out, then we'll get a much better footing of how things are probably going to shape up for the rest of the year. But going into week one, there is a lot of uncertainty and pretty much play guys where you drafted them. If you drafted studs to start for your team, just go ahead and start them. Okay, well, that then leads me into what I was talking about a little bit earlier about. So you don't go ahead and tweak it based off of maybe matchups that might be more favorable to somebody that's sitting on the bench or anything of that nature, because sometimes people do that even out of the gate in week one. Yeah, but we don't know what these defenses are going to look like. I mean, you know, Jacksonville's defense is going to be good, but you know, so many years people were getting Seattle's defense and Seattle's defense didn't overwhelm (laughs) as far as how they produced for your fantasy teams. So going into the season, like I said, for the first couple of weeks, you don't really know what defenses are going to be great. Personnel is changing defense and defense has a lot to do with how guys play with each other. So you don't know that if a team is going up against a certain defense that, oh, you need to bench them. You just don't know that yet. Since our conversation on our last full edition of the Fantasy Football Pater Podcast Primer that is now available on the Pop Culture Cosmos channel, what are some of the things in training camp that has been that you think has stood out that you think fantasy owners should focus on and should understand more clearly before they head into the season? Maybe it's a position battle where somebody's been named the starter that you didn't yeah. think that would be happen. What are some of the things that might stand out for you that you might want to keep an eye on? Well, I've heard a lot of really, really good things about Carlos Hyde and drafting a guy like Nick Chubb. I watched a little bit of Nick Chubb down in Georgia, and uh, the guy is amazing. But Carlos Hyde is such a good football player, and he's really shown that in training camp. So I believe Nick Chubb eventually takes over. But as far as week one, I think Carlos Hyde is going to be the guy. Adrian Peterson going to the Redskins, I think it's a pretty big deal. Losing Darius Geis, who was the guy that the Redskins really wanted to carry the ball on early downs, Adrian Peterson has looked pretty good. Now, last year, Adrian Peterson looked good for the first couple games. Then the Cardinals just kind of ran him into the ground. So it'll be interesting to see how the Redskins balance that backfield. But to be honest with you, I think I think I think Adrian Peterson, as far as fantasy purposes, maybe is good for a couple weeks. (laughs) After that, I just don't trust him. You know, it's just it's just reacting to the injuries. And there haven't been a lot of devastating injuries in the And preseason. that's something that's good. Yeah, you're yeah, right. That's, I haven't... that's that's really good. You're you're talking Darius Geis, which really changed that offense. And then Mark Easley. And like you said, that's a number one receiver on a passing offense that you really don't want anything to do with. So you're right. Uh, there has been, thank goodness, uh, a lot of injuries avoided in this preseason. I think what was there another offensive lineman as well that got injured? Oh, yeah. The guy in Arizona, their center, but they had spent a third round pick drafting a center. So that's not going to be as devastating. It'll be interesting to see how Andrew Luck comes back. I read some reports that he feels like he doesn't have the zing that he once had. And that may be true. I, I haven't seen much of that. Doug Baldwin, wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks has come out and said that his knee is about 80, 85% and that he doesn't think it'll be good all year, which is really concerning. I really, really like him coming into the season. For me, that drops him down just a little bit. But Doug Baldwin has missed two games in his career, so he's going to play through it. I just hope it doesn't zap all of his effectiveness out. There's a couple guys out there that will be coming back from injury. We still haven't seen Saquon Barkley play and really get any meaningful snaps in a game. So, you know, there's a couple things that are concerning, but for the most part, this has been a pretty injury-free preseason. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. Don't touch that dial. Wait, do, do people still use dials? Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmos show and the PCC Multiverse. I see the potential for basically like another Netflix kind of paradigm shift where 
Here comes this other major player. They have a ton of resources. Apple could change the way that entertainment is consumed. They say it's the only time this year that you'll have stars from each brand battling each other. And we know it's not going to be the case, but they like to say that and more power to them, I guess. Well, it's a big first step bringing all those superheroes together. There were definitely some parts of the movie that I that I really enjoyed. And then there were some parts that I thought just kind of fell short of expectation. Part of it has to be something to do with how it's being promoted. And this is a thing where audiences do not agree with critics. That's the Pop Culture Cosmo Show. And the PCC Multiverse, every week on the Podcast Radio Network and Apple Podcasts. And over a dozen of your favorite streaming and podcasting options. Once again, it is my good friend Tyler Baker from the Fantasy Football Pater Podcast, which is now available right now right here on the Pop Culture Cosmos channel. Any last thoughts on the way out, my friend? I tell you what, it's going to be a great season. Looking forward yeah. to it. And let the smacketh talk begin, my <laughs> friend. The smacketh talk must commence. <laughs> it must. If you have a draft this weekend, I highly recommend getting on uh, ESPN or Yahoo or, or I think CBS Sports might do it too, or one of the major sites and do a mock draft. Get used to drafting. Mock drafts are very key to making sure when your draft comes around, you're not hit with a bunch of surprises. Doing mock drafts will help you be in situations where you have to decide between players. That's very, very helpful. And I know this almost goes without saying, the only major bit of advice I would say for myself is I see a lot right now on social media and as far as the fantasy football groups that are going around right now, a lot of them are asking to be a part of pay leagues. So I know there's a lot of pay and cash leagues that are going on or out there. Mm -hmm. If you are going to go and decide to go and delve into a pay or cash league, my suggestion is be prepared. Listen to, to the advice of not only just us here, but any of the, of the other places that, that you enjoy or really use as a reference. Make sure you're really prepared because now you're putting some cash on the line. It's not mm -hmm. just some casual free type deal. Like if you're doing something free on ESPN, Yahoo, NFL.com or what have you, this is something for real that you now need to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And because it, like I said, it's, it's, it's for money. It gets more serious. The emotions get in there and, and really just make sure you're, you're always staying tuned with what's going on wherever you get your fantasy football fix, because like I said, when the money's on the line, a lot of people need to get more serious about it and because one or two crucial mistakes and you could be out a serious amount of cash. That's true. In fact, I very rarely play leagues that there's no money on the line. And it's only because people take it more seriously. If people took free leagues seriously, I would play more free leagues, but people just don't. So if you are in a league where there is money involved, make sure you know the person that is commissioning the league. Make sure that you know them and trust them. If it is playing with people that you don't know and they're playing for money, make sure that it's a third-party site that's holding the money just because you want to be careful. You want to have your bases covered. But yeah, when there's some cash on the line, people are going to try a lot harder. And just pay attention. Pay attention going into your draft. Relax. Remember you're still having fun. But if you prepare... And if you do some mock drafts, you're going to go into your draft and you're going to be a lot more relaxed. It's going to be a lot easier for you to have fun. One last thing before we head on out. Jerry Jones recently commented on the NFL schedule. I believe it was a radio interview, if I'm not mistaken, that he would like to see the schedule change to include 18 games and reduce the number of exhibition games down to two. I'm more of the add one as far as to the regular season and take one away from the exhibition season because I think right now we're coming to a dead point in the actual exhibition series that's out there and that game four for virtually every team is really just almost just like it's a going through the motions type deal. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Plus, it will also help the fantasy football leagues that are out there with an extra game, an extra week, or even two. So what are your thoughts on that as far as if you had the ability, would you extend the season per se? From a fantasy football standpoint, yeah, more games. From a real football standpoint, a 16-game season is already a grind. Adding two more games, I don't think that would make for better football. I, I, just, I just don't think that would make for better football. And look, 
the, <laughs> like I said before, I don't even watch preseason. It's it's football light, you know. It, it's in, it, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Jerry Jones would love to have another game at AT and T Stadium because <laughs> I'm sure the revenues would increase by an eighth. <laughs> Well, I just think, like you said, if people like you and, and a lot of other fans out there don't take the exhibition season, I don't really at all whatsoever. And I know a lot of other people do as well. And four seems like to me way too many games that are out there. And I wouldn't mind seeing a 17th or an 18th week added just because of the fact that it makes things more important, makes things more mm-hmm. relevant. And obviously, uh, from a financial position for, for the NFL, it would be more beneficial for them. But from a fan standpoint, maybe would gain more interest, even if it just meant also as well that you're adding maybe one or two more teams to the playoff race as well. Yeah, I think the preseason is good. You know, if I lived around D.C., I would probably go to some preseason games. I went to some preseason games last year just to go, just to scout. I was living in Southern California then, and I went to a couple preseason games. So they're fun to go to. It's fun to see the guys in uniform. And I've noticed this season, there's been some guys that were playing a lot more than I expected them to play in the preseason. But it is a good tune-up. You know, you get used to the pace of an NFL game. So... I don't think preseason is bad because, hey, if you don't want to run your starters out there and risk them getting hurt, you've got 50 other guys that you could put out there that are probably not going to make the team. It gives them a chance to kind of show what they have. And preseason is good for the teams because there's only a certain amount of roster spots, but there's also some practice squad positions that you're going to need to fill. And if you see a guy giving his heart out on the field and you're going to want to give him a practice squad spot. And I think preseason helps better define the team throughout the the rest of the season. That's some pointed words indeed. Once again, it is the Fantasy Football Pater podcast. Tell you what, Tyler Baker, it's great to have you doing the actual podcast here as part of the Pop Culture Cosmos experience in full. Your segments will be running on our shows, on not only on Monday, Friday, but the full episodes will be on our channel as well just truly appreciate all the time you're taking for the well the for us this year and like i said my friend best of luck to you this season outside of week one (laughs) (laughs) that's very much appreciated it's going to be fun we've got our own league and that'll be fun to talk about but getting your listeners involved in fantasy football if you have an opportunity to join a league join a league and if you need some pointers you can always go to the facebook group at fantasy football Pater podcast group and ask a question and it's really good for first time fantasy players so if you have an opportunity to join a league go ahead just do it it'll be fun you'll enjoy it and you can also email us at popculturecosmos at yahoo.com uh-huh yep tell you what tyler it's going to be a great season i'm looking forward to it and let the smack of talk begin my friend <laughs> i'm looking forward to it so great to have you part of the pop culture cosmos and the fantasy football Pater Podcast.